Hello everyone, I'm Kevin Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. Pope Francis welcomed Jordan's King Abdullah II and Prince Ghazi bin Mohammed bin Talal to his residence at the Vatican for tea on April 7th. The meeting comes less than seven weeks before the start of his trip to the Holy Land, which is scheduled to begin on May 24th in Amman, Jordan. While in Jordan, the Pope will be welcomed at the Royal Palace, celebrate Mass in a stadium, and meet with refugees and disabled young people along the Jordan River. Jesuit Father Federico Lombardi, Vatican spokesman, said that during the visit, King Abdullah told the Pope how hard Jordanians are working to prepare his welcome and of their commitment to working together for peace and interreligious dialogue. The presence of Prince Ghazi, an advisor to the King on religious and cultural affairs, as well as being active in the field of interreligious inter dialogue, indicated that dialogue was among the topics of the meeting. More news now from the Vatican. Over the weekend, Pope Francis gave out pocket-sized Gospels during a visit to St. Gregory the Great Parish on the outskirts of Rome and at the Sunday Angelus in St. Peter's Square. Catholic News Service has more from Rome. E io vorrei darvi il Vangelo e voi portate il Vangelo a casa. Questo Vangelo è un Vangelo tascabile portare sempre con noi e per leggere un pochettino un brano aprirlo così e leggere qualcosa del Vangelo quando devo fare una coda o quando sono sul bus ma quando sono comodo nel bus perché se non sono comodo devo vigilare le tasche <ride> eh, ma leggere sempre un pezzettino del Vangelo con noi no? ci farà tanto bene ci farà tanto bene Looking at news now from around the country, Atlanta Archbishop Wilton Gregory has announced that he is selling the new Archbishop's residence and will invest the proceeds from the seal into the needs of the Catholic community. He said he will vacate the residence in early May and move into another archdiocesan property. The announcement followed public and media criticism over the new 2.2 million residence for the Archbishop. In March, Archbishop Gregory issued a statement of apology in his column in the archdiocesan newspaper. The Archbishop said he was disappointed that while he and his advisors were able to justify the project fiscally, logistically, and practically, he personally failed to project the cost in terms of his own integrity and pastoral credibility with the people of God of North and Central Georgia. The new 6,000 square foot residence is located on property donated to the Archdiocese from the estate of Joseph Mitchell, the nephew of Margaret Mitchell, author of Gone with the Wind. Of the 15 million left to the Archdiocese, 7.5 million was given to the Cathedral of Christ, the King, where Mitchell worshipped. Almost 2 million was used to buy the Archbishop's former residence, which is on the Cathedral grounds. Proceeds from that seal was used to build the new residence. Archbishop Gregory moved into the newly built home in January. Back to the Vatican, the Tanzanian bishops have completed their ad limina visits with Pope Francis. Rome reports. Takes a look. Pope Francis met with the third and last group of Tanzanian bishops who traveled to Rome for their ad limina visit. After meeting with the third group, he welcomed the entire delegation. In a speech handed out to them, Pope Francis asked them to maintain the missionary spirit of the church in this African country. To continue the evangelization of Tanzania, the Pope said the bishops need to urgently address the adequate human, spiritual, intellectual, and pastoral formation of local priests, seminarians, as well as lay people. The Pope also highlighted the work the Church carries out, especially in the areas of health and social services. He also praised the bishops for their pursuit of peace and reconciliation, citing them as examples for the region. The ad limina visit began on Friday. In all, the Pope met with 28 bishops over three days. In news now from around the world, according to an email sent by the Jesuits' Middle East province to the Jesuits' headquarters in Rome, 75-year-old Dutch Jesuit Father Franz van der Lut has been killed in Syria. Father van der Lut, who had worked in Syria since 1966, was beaten by armed men 
and killed with two bullets to the head in front of the Jesuit residence in Olms. Father Vandeloot became known around the world after appealing for aid for the besieged city of Holmes in the video posted on YouTube in late January. He had declined suggestions to leave because he wanted to help Syria's suffering civilians. In a telephone, telephone interview with Catholic News Service this past February, Father Vandeloot uh, talked about the lack of food and how families were trapped in the war-torn nation. He said the wounded were not receiving the proper treatment and newborn babies were dying every day. And finally in the news, after accepting the recommendations of his International Council of Cardinals and other advisory groups, Pope Francis has decided that he will keep open the Institute for the Words of Religion, the IOR, also known as the Vatican Bank. The Pope has approved a plan to increase its transparency and accountability. In June of 2013, Pope Francis established a commission to review the Vatican Bank, asking the five commission members to study whether the bank was in harmony with the mission of the Universal Church. While not providing details, on proposed changes for the bank. The Vatican's April 7th statement seemed intended to reassure the bank's employees and the clients that the Institute would have a future. Well, that is all the information we have for you at this time. Don't forget to keep up to date on Catholic News throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.